بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد. Some of the things we have to be aware of in seeking the knowledge, some of the obstacles to benefiting in seeking the knowledge, especially for someone beginning in their uh, beginning to traverse the path of knowledge. And the Prophet وسلم, explained to us the importance <clears throat> and the reward of the person who strives to seek and attain knowledge. من سلك طريقا يلتلمسه به علم سهل الله له طريقا إلى الجنة. Whoever traverses the path of knowledge, then Allah will make easy for him the path of paradise. So some of the things that we have to be aware of when seeking, uh, when when beginning to seek knowledge, and really all throughout our seeking of knowledge, uh, we're we're going to list about five or six different things. The first thing being يَحْذَرُ فِي إِبْتِدَاءِ أَمْرِهِ مِنْ إِشْ مِنْ إِشْتِغَالِ بِخِلَافِيَاتِ بَيْنَ الْعُلَمَاءِ وَبَيْنَ النَّاسِ مُطْلَقًا فِي سَمْعِيَاتِ أَوْ أَقْلِيَاتِ So this is a beautiful, beautiful uh, piece of advice. The first thing we want to be aware of in trying to attain knowledge, an obstacle that we have to avoid and try to uh, to avoid at all costs, is avoid in the beginning of seeking knowledge and getting involved in the differences of opinions and the differences between the scholars and the differences between the people in general. So this this is imperative because I can attest personally that I have in my 10 plus years in trying to seek knowledge since 1997 and now it's 2013 so in a, quite a few years, I have seen so many people trying to seek the knowledge and some and many people in the beginning of their seeking the knowledge, that they begin with talking about this sheikh or that sheikh or this da'i or that da'i. You know, the differences. Sheikh so-and-so rudded him. And, oh, you listen to tape, tape so-and-so? And the person doesn't even have a ta'seel in ilm, meaning they don't even know the beginning. They can't probably, often cases, read even Surah Al-Fatiha properly. Or re go beyond Jews al amma in their reading of the Qur'an. But yet they're busy in themselves believing that they are involving themselves in the science of Jarwa Ta'deel. And this is a very dangerous thing. In the beginning stages of seeking knowledge to think that you are ahlan to be speaking about people and involving yourself in the differences. I've seen people in some of my videos even make comments, oh, you met, you quoted from Sheikh Ibrahim Rahili, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, one of our mashayikh of Ahl Sunnah. And there's differences. Some of the scholars refute him for a statement he said and so forth, and he rutted that statement. But for someone who doesn't have the beginning stages of knowledge, who can't even get into the arguments of what those scholars say, and what the sheikh has said, and his refutation, and their refutation, why would they busy themselves in the beginning of their seeking of knowledge? Maybe possibly they don't even know Arabic. And they, they're, they're not busying themselves with learning Arabic, but instead they're trying to advise people when they're not Ahlan to do so, when they don't have the knowledge and the prerequisites. Or they're busying themselves talking about issues of this guy and this guy, and they don't even have the basic tools to get into the books, to benefit from the scholars, to sit under those beards and benefit from them. So this is a very dangerous thing. This is an obstacle to seeking knowledge. The second thing is, يَحْذَرْ فِي إِبْتِدَاءَ طَلَبِهِ طَلَبِهِ مِنْ مُطَلَعَاتِ فِي تَفَارِيقِ الْمُصَنَّفَاتِ فَإِنَّهُ يُضِيعَ زَمَانَهُ So, also, in the beginning stages of seeking knowledge, beware of involving yourself in reading uh, big books and, you know, starting this book and this book and this book and just be, you know, Instead, it's better to concentrate your efforts, especially in the beginning stages of knowledge, to concentrate your efforts on one thing. For example, focus on the Quran and some Tawheed. You know, for, focus on Tawheed and the Arabic language. 
focus on Tawheed and some some other basic things, but don't get involved in all these sciences. You're talking about Aluma Hadith. You're trying to involve yourself in the sciences of Hadith and you, you haven't really studied Tawheed and then you're studying this book and you're studying this book. So be careful. Try to focus yourself so that way you actually attain knowledge and you actually attain um, it's Khan or, or you, you become strong in something and then you go to the next thing. So that's very important. So that way you're not divided and you, you're not like the person who studies everything but gains nothing. The third thing that we want to avoid. وَكَذَلِكَ يَحْذِرْ مِنْ تَنَقْلْ مِنْ كِتَابِ لِكِتَابِ أَوْ مِنْ شَيْخِ لِشَيْخِ So also another advice that was given regarding seeking the knowledge is that to avoid, uh, again, going from book to book and also from scholar to scholar. So in the beginning stages of seeking knowledge, for you to study with four or five mashayikh or th three or four different mashayikh, especially if you don't have the, the qudra to really gain benefit, it could be confusing. For example, if you study possibly even the same book, but you're studying it with two different mashayikh, one sheikh is saying, this is the Qawla Rajah. This is the most correct opinion, in my opinion. And Allah knows best. And the other, the other sheikh says, this is the correct opinion, in my opinion. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And they're do both doing it from humility. But this can confuse the beginning student of knowledge. So it's better, as the ulama advise, to stick with one sheikh or, or not, not much more than that. One or two mashayikh. And especially if you're studying the same... Uh, elm. And this is in the beginning of stage of knowledge. Again, we're talking about beginners in seeking the knowledge. We're not talking about people who have a soul and people who have been seeking knowledge for a while and they have the ability to study more than one text and they can study with more than one scholar and they have the tools to be able to distinguish haq, uh, that which is truth and sound and that which is false or to, to, to be able to understand and see a mistake because they have a foundation. So that's different than that person, we're talking about the person who's a beginning student of knowledge. So these are obstacles we have to beware. Another thing is to avoid تَحْذِيرُ مِن تَقْدِيمُ الْمُهِمْ عَلَىٰ أَهِمْ بَلْ الْأَهِمْ ثُمَّ الْمُهِمْ So another golden advice is is that to beware of taking preference in one science over another science in studying. Meaning, stick with the things that are the most important. So the most important for us is the beginning with Tawheed. Because if you die and you study, you have Itqan and Fiqh. You, you know the Messiah and Fiqh. You know Qu'a'id Fiqhiyah. You know the principles of Fiqh. You know Usul of Fiqh. You have all of these principles, but you don't know Tawheed. It will not benefit you on the Day of Judgment. So that's why it's imperative. Stick with those, those sciences uh, you know, in your beginning stages, learn the most important thing. So, learning Tawheed, learning who Allah is and how to worship Him properly, meaning learning Tahara, related to Fiqh, learning how to wash yourself properly, how to, uh, uh, how to pray properly. Those kind of things are the beginning stages of knowledge and imperative stages that we all have to Thing. So don't involve yourself, again, an example, I'm not beating up on the science, this is incredibly important science, uh, speaking about, uh, you know, people who have deviated and stuff, that's a very important science in that religion, but not everybody has the right to speak in that, uh, that important bab, and not everybody has, has the ability to. So, and not everyone is at the level to. So this is, this is something you gain after time to be able to run and refute the people of innovation or to be able to point out this mistake. That's important that, because that's defending the religion. Allah's religion must be defended. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved this religion through men, through men that stood up and defended the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and they refuted Ahl al-Bidah and the people of desires. But... The beginning student of knowledge does not have a place in that. So it's very imperative that we know that that can be an obstacle, that we busy ourselves with the most important sciences, beginning with Tawheed, beginning with uh, learning Tahara, how to purify yourself and how to pray properly, uh, learning the Arabic language, the Quran, things like this. These are the most important things for us in the beginning stages uh, of our seeking the knowledge.
And in fact, those are some of the highest levels of knowledge, especially the knowledge of Tawheed. There's not anything greater than learning who your Lord is and how to worship Him properly, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, another important advice to uh, regarding avoiding or regarding uh, obstacles to seeking knowledge يَحْذَرْ مَنْ غَفْلَتِي عَنَ الْعَمَلِي أَلَّذِي هُوَ مَقْصُودْ بِالْعَلْمِ This is a very important thing. That we have to practice. We have to practice what we preach and practice what we learn. So this is a warning that we should be warned or avoid this obstacle of being not a person who practices. A person who just doesn't practice and you know what they're learning because the as the Salaf used to say, al ilm, al 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 ilm, that the doing deeds, doing righteous deeds, is the product or it's the fruit of knowledge. So that means that the more knowledge we gain, the better we should become in our deeds. And may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala forgive us of our shortcomings, because all of us have them. But we should be trying to pray our sunnah prayers. You know, if we're gaining knowledge and we understand the benefit, we know the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We know the reward, then we should be trying to practice those things. If we know what's prohibited, we should stay away from those things. If we know what's uh, what's a commandment for us, then we should be striving to do those things, and that is practicing the knowledge. And may Allah forgive us of our shortcomings. Amin ya rabbil alamin. Another obstacle to knowledge, and this is the. Uh, Next to the last one, is that we should avoid uh, looking at ourselves in, in, in a proud way and thinking that we're camel, that you know that you are, and that you're self-sufficient from the ulama. Very imperative. I've known some students of knowledge that, mashallah, they've gained. Allah favored them. They studied for many years in some of the maraqis of sunnah or graduated from such and such a university. But they tend to, when they finish, they tend to almost make themselves to be like the ulama. Or you never see them, you never hear of them calling on the phone and asking questions. Instead, they try to answer every question themselves. They don't go back to those people who have much more knowledge and who they studied at their feet. Instead, they look at themselves as if they are self-sufficient. This is, this is an incredibly dangerous thing. And may Allah protect us from it, of being um, proud of yourself, thinking that you are... Uh, free from the scholars thinking that you are camel and uh, I want to make a shout because some people they believe for example in the West we have some of the groups and some of these um, these organizations that have students of knowledge you have to remember their place these are students of knowledge I know in our societies we call them mashayikh because maybe they have that place in our society but they are not ulama it takes a lot to become an alam and to be a mufti and to be mujtahid and, and have all those great those great terms applied to you. It's not simply a, a matter of just saying that so and so he's an alam or he's a he's a scholar. No, you have to put everyone in their place and put yourself in in check in place. So if you see a person calling themselves a scholar, then you should be careful of that person and know that that person him, himself could possibly be afflicted by ignorance. And I'll give you an example. I've heard many, mashallah, uh, the opposite of that. For example, one of our mashayikh, Shaykh Salih al-Suhaymi, Hafidullah Ta'ala, one of the great scholars in Medina, he teaches in the Haram in Medina, in the Prophet Sallallahu Masjid. And I, I've heard him with my own ears say, you know, uh, about himself, he said, I'm a tawayn ibn ilm, and a tawayn ibn ilm, meaning that I am a small student of knowledge. So if this alam, he's an alam, an alam rabbani that teaches in the haram, you know, is taught in Jama Islamiyah and it has great fadl and manzil with ahl sunnah and, 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 and with the ummah, that if he considers himself a basic student of knowledge, what about us? And what about those people who are calling in the West, those groups and those uh, those organizations? Put everyone in their place. Yes, there's people out there who have knowledge and can offer and benefit our communities. But just realize that they, be careful of calling people ulama. 
And if you see a man calling himself, I'm a sheikh, don't worry. I can answer this question. Or he says, I'm one of the ulama, you know, stand back. They know that this person is afflicted by jahil and ignorance. And uh, Sa'id ibn Jubair, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, one of the tabi'een, you know, one of the followers of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, لا يزل الرجل عالم ما تعلم فإذا ترك تعلم وظن أنه قد استغنى فهو أجهل ما يكون So, Sa'id ibn Jubair, rahim, rahimahullah ta'ala, said, he said, a man will not cease to be an alam, you know, a person who's learning, as long as he is seeking knowledge, as long as he's learning. But if he leaves learning, and where do you learn? You don't learn just from books. The, the, the Salaf used to criticize those people, call them suhafi, those people who just learn from their books. That's incredibly dangerous, and we have that in the West too. We have some Arabs, because they have the Arabic language, they only read books, and they benefit their communities. But be careful of them if they're making fatwa, and if they're making rulings and stuff, and they've never studied with Ahl al That's incredibly dangerous, because if you don't study with the scholars, you don't know how to use those books, which are tools, properly. And that is just the way it is. So, again, as going back to the statement of uh, Sa'id ibn Jubair, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said that a man won't cease to be an alam as long as he seeks, seeks knowledge, as long as he studies. And if he leaves studying and he thinks that he is self-sufficient, meaning self-sufficient from alam, self-sufficient from the ulama, then he is more ignorant than he could be. Then, you know, he is one of the most ignorant of the people. Basically, he's saying that this is a sign of great ignorance. A person who thinks that they're self-sufficient from the scholars and thinks that they are uh, self-sufficient from seeking more knowledge, then this person, this is a sign of, of, of great danger and a sign that this person is truly ignorant. And the last thing we're going to mention as an obstacle that the Sheikh mentioned, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, also beware of busying yourself with strange uh, those issues which are very um, very rare issues in the, in, the, in the knowledge you know, busying yourself for example, even when you see people who live in the west and they busy themselves and this is a big issue we see with the tekfiris for example they live in America, they live in the UK, and they're busy talking about this leader and that leader. In fact, this is really a shav, a messiah shav, in the sense that it is not something relevant and pertinent to them. They live in a non-Muslim society as a minority, struggling to maybe maintain their rights and, and, and struggling to hold on to their religion against all kinds of sins, men marrying men, uh, all kind of things allowed in some of those societies. Even people are allowed to cohabitate with animals, and this is true in the German Constitution. You know, in in Germany, in many some of the, several European countries and so forth, people are allowed to marry animals. So, for a person to be living in those country as a Muslim, struggling to find a place to pray, struggling to can't hear the adhan, struggling to just practice the basics and learn, don't doesn't know how to. Uh, uh, make pray, pay their zakat properly, but yet they're busy with themselves with the leader. What was this leader upon? This leader said this statement. This leader was wearing this. This leader was doing this. This leader is not ruling by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala Sharia. They're busy themselves with these kind of masail. These are major masail, and these are masail really reserved for the ulama, for the scholars, not just any Mickey D uh, a scholar. We're talking about major scholars who deal with these Messiah, who deal with this Messiah of Tikfir and when someone has left Islam and not. And this was reserved when making these judgments for the Qadi, for the Qudat, for the Hakim, for the, you know, the judges and so forth. Not for any Tom, Dick and Harry who studied a year or two in this place or this place or who's never studied to make Tikfir of this one and make Tikfir of this one. Call this one an innovator. Call that one this. No, that's not their place. So, busying yourself with rare issues uh, and, and, and issues that you have no business uh, involving yourself with or that are way above your level, 
that can be an obstacle to really attaining knowledge. Because how many people have we seen? With our own eyes, we've witnessed. They've been talking about tikfir and other big issues for years. And they still, a lot of them can't even pray, uh, pray properly. They don't know how to make tayammu. They don't know how to make istijmar. They don't even know what it is to wash yourself with stones. They don't even know perhaps more than three or four hadiths and probably not one have they memorized in the Arabic language. So why are they busy with this one and that one and this person and that person and major Messiah issues or very rare, rare issues? That is not the place and those are obstacles to knowledge and they, by their ignorance of by their ignorance, they bear witness that, the, that those, those things are obstacles to knowledge, that busying themselves with those things which are not beneficial for them or that they have no place busying themselves with are actually with, uh, re restraining them and keeping them away from seeking knowledge. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept this good and forgive our evil. Anything I said correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with al nafia beneficial knowledge. وَرِسْكِ and 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 uh, wealth and, and those things that will benefit us. وَعَمَلِ uh, الْمُتَّقَبْلِينَ And deeds that are accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَصَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَمَ عَلَى نَبِيَّنَّ مُحَمَّدٍ